Greetings everyone, Archimedes here, and welcome back to another Brickfield LEGO video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the clutch gear and its uses in our models. So, let's get started, shall we? Before we get any farther, however, I want to make sure you know the difference between the LEGO clutch gear and the clutch in your car. Please note that I'm going to be doing this in very simplified terms, just to make sure that everyone can understand this. In an ordinary automobile, the engine is always running. However, as you well know, the engine is not always connected to the wheels. Think about it. If you're in your car and you have to pull up to a stop sign, the engine still keeps on running, but the wheels stop. So thus, there has to be some mechanism that engages or disengages the engine from the wheels. This mechanism is called a clutch. If you think about it, a clutch works similarly to the a nozzle on your hose. When you have a nozzle screwed on to the end of your hose, you can turn on the water all you like, and the water will shoot up into the nozzle. However, unless you depress the handle of the nozzle, the water won't flow through. So, if the engine is running, but the clutch is not engaged, the wheels won't spin. However, once you engage, engage the clutch, or depress the handle, the water will shoot out and away, or the car will start driving. Make sense? The Lego clutch gear, however, works much more simply. Instead of engaging or disengaging a shaft, it will, when placed in a gear train, it simply regulates speed or torque. To use this gear in a gear train, you would attach an axle that was powered by the main motor through the gray cross hole in the center of the clutch gear. You would then attach the remaining train out to your output on the teeth of the white part of the gear. As power from the axle came in, spinning the gray part, it would rotate the white part of the gear, and thus the rest of the gear train, until the speed or torque reached a certain point at which point the gray part would spin freely inside the white part, while the white part would stay still. In short, the LEGO clutch gear provides a way to create slip in your gear trains. What does this mean? Well, slip means that in a gear train between the input, the power, and the output, whatever action is being created. You can regulate the speed or torque of the motor. Thus, if a motor is spinning too fast, slipping members will simply stop rotating at that speed, thus making sure that the output does not spin at dangerous levels. Make sense? But, Arcy, you may ask me, when do I really need to regulate speed or torque in our models? Don't we want things to be as powerful as they can be? Well, not necessarily. What if you made a car whose motor spins incredibly fast? However, when you put that car with wheels down on the ground, the friction of the wheels spinning was too much. There wasn't enough torque to push the car forwards, and thus it just sat there. The motor spinning frantically, gears clicking as everything tried desperately to rotate those tires, but simply couldn't. You could quickly strip your motor or break your Lego pieces. Horrors! If you simply applied too much speed or torque to them. However, if you added a clutch gear or another mechanism with slip, 
it would act as a failsafe. If the gear train was spinning at a shattering speed, the clutch or the slipping mechanism would prevent the gear train from spinning out of control and damaging your models. So, do we all, as people who don't like to break our Lego pieces, agree that these mechanisms are necessary? I sure hope so. However, what happens when we don't have, it, have one of these fancy Lego clutch gears? Well, there are some other options. Let's just take a quick look, shall we? The first method of doing this uses pulleys. As you can see, pulleys can turn the wheel very easily. However, if too much torque or speed occur, the pulleys, the bands, can slip in the grooves in the pulleys. So thus, the back pulley is no longer being rotated, even, the, oh, even though the front one is. See? Using any sort of pulley band system in a gear train in your models allows a slipping mechanism. The added bonus of this is that depending on the tightness of the pulleys, you can figure out how much, at what point, you want the one mechanism to start slipping. Thus, if you use a bigger band, the pulley system will slip at a much slower speed, as opposed to a smaller one, which will fit into the grooves much better and won't slip until you're going much quicker. Another method of creating a slipping assembly uses gears. As you can see here, I've made a fairly simple gear train. However, one piece of the gear train, one beam, which fits in between, is loose. You can pop it out at will. When you spin the gear train, it moves very smoothly. However, when too much torque occurs, the beam with the gears on it slips out of place, as you can see here. It slipped off the beam which is on, so it can pop off easily. This disengages it from the motor, and thus stops this damaging power from reaching the wheels. This method, however, is a little bulkier and requires a manual reset. It's kind of useful if you're creating a large car design that'll smash into walls or something like that. Before I conclude this video, however, I'd like you to just quick take a look at one design I just designed today that works very similarly to the clutch in your car. As you can see here, I have a pretty basic gear train with two gears attached to the main drive gear. And it works fairly smoothly, right? However, if you notice, the beam with the two small follower gears can be lifted off the gear train by means of this little lever here. Thus, when you power the gear train, if you want to disengage the wheels from the motor, all you have to do is pull up on this switch and it'll disengage. And you just have to drop it back in to re-engage the gear train just like the clutch in your car. This is a pretty unrefined design, but I bet with your stellar intellect, you could come up with a brilliant way of improving this and making it work, work in your models. But what about that working transmission for this clutch? Well, we'll get to that next video. For today, we looked at clutches and other slipping assemblies. We looked at the actual Lego clutch gear, we also looked at two ways to create slipping assemblies without the Lego clutch gear. One, using pulleys and belts, and the other, a manual reset design, using a gear beam that could pop off of a gear train. We also talked about the difference between a Lego clutch gear and the clutch gear in your car, and we even took a look at my very unrefined assembly, which provides a little bit of inspiration, I hope, in creating your own real working clutch. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I had you in my clutches. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you liked this video and my silly humor. I hope that it was interesting or informative, or at least that it entertained you for a little while. If you did in fact like this video, Please comment, rate, or subscribe. If you 
didn't like this video, still, please comment it right. And if you really want, still subscribe too. The point is, I want to hear what you have to say would make this channel different and better. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you all farewell. My name is Archimedes36, and I'll see you next Sunday.